I'm wearing one of my Mangalisa Robert Sabukwe t-shirts. Well, oh, this is one of those we call vests here in South Africa. Look at what it says in the bottom. We are f now we are fighting for the noblest cause on earth. The liberation of mankind. Mangalisa Robert Sabukwe. Woof. I know, I guess the modern interpretation say Sabukwe was a beast. Let me tell you how bad Sabukwe was. Um, you know, he's in prison in Robin Island. Everybody knows that. Well, maybe you don't know that. But here's the difference. And you know, let's say Medieva was in prison on, on uh, Robin Island also. But, mm, leftover smoothie from yesterday. Still great. Um, when they imprisoned uh, Mangalisa Robert Sabukwe on uh, Robin Island, he they, they had a separate house for him. I mean, like, this is before um, whatever, but Madiba got in prison. They had a, he was in isolation. In fact, they were so afraid of him, they put him in a, he had a separate, off to the thing, and the guards couldn't even talk to him, and the food, whatever have you. Think about that. Now, Madiba, you know, he had to, remember the, the whole book, you know, he had this kumbaya with his garden, and blah, 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 finding humanity and all the rest of that other stuff. But when he was there, when Megalus Robert Sabugwe was there, he was such a, like a, a figure that when they let him out in the yard, you know, to walk, you know, to walk, walk the yard, they wouldn't let any other prisoners around him. The prisoners, the other prisoners would all, they would run to think like little children looking at this man. He was pretty tall. Looking at this, just look, you know, it was like, that's him, that's him. Wow. You know, in fact, they, that's the whole thing, you know, I mean, look, look Just look up Mangalisa Robert Sabukwe, and you 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 may understand that that was later. He's the one. In fact, he quit the ANC on principle, on principle, because he see that was going in the wrong direction. That's how he started the PAC, the Pan African you know Congress, the PAC from Mangalisa Robert. He's the one that the whole passport thing, and uh, look, look look him up, look him up. Anyway. I was thinking about that humanity. You know, who, what kind of? Well, there, there is, there is no equal. You know, the closest thing to Mangalisa Rapa Sabukwe would be uh, Malcolm X in terms of um, um, speaking. In fact, when I read Mangalisa Rapa Sabukwe, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, wait a second, Mangal, you know, like uh, you know, Malcolm X said says the same things, but they were, but they were influenced by the same cat. I think the guy was out of England. I gotta find out this guy's name. I keep on forgetting. But the same, they read the same cat. But Mangalisa Rapa Sabukwe was a little bit before. Um, um, when I when he came, he started speaking. He was a little bit before Malcolm X, you know. So, anyways, you look it up, you'll see what it is. But I, whoops, hey, don't spill my. Mm. I want to spill my uh, thing. Yesterday was a day. Yesterday being uh, today is is Monday in South Africa. We're sitting here on, on the eastern Cape of of uh, South Africa. A location. Um, yesterday was um, Juju's birthday. You say Juju? Who's Juju? Who's Juju? What was important? Is Juju? What, what was yesterday? Well, yesterday was uh, what, March third. Who was born on March third? Who was born on March third? Nineteen eighty-one. Juju. Julius Malema. Okay. Julius Malema. Okay, look. Uh, Julius Malema, he came to promise because he was, uh, like, uh, like Madiba, he was part of the, not like Madiba, but he was part of ANC Youth League, you know, when he was younger in the Youth League, right? And then, you know, he was really very, he was a force. And uh, basically, let's put it that way, Zuma kicked, they, they kicked him out of the ANC Youth League. Let's put it that way, a whole bunch of things. You can look that up too. Well, he just started his own party. The Economic Freedom Fighters, EFF. So now in South Africa, and that's what, when was that? I forgot what year that was, 85, I don't know, but not 85, 95, not 95, 2005, whenever it was. And then he started raising all kinds of things because uh, basically I did some numbers, but he's what's called a, um, yeah, I guess Pisces, uh, February, March, yeah, I think it's Pisces, yeah, my, Pisces is a Pisces 3, okay? 3, I'm going to just keep, keep with the numbers. 3 is a number for, you know, loquacious, you know, talk. Um, uh, I'll get into the subject. Anyway, so, so yesterday was his birthday. So it got me to thinking. 
so what I did is I took, I said, well, okay, let me, let me put it this way. In the 80s, when I was in the city in the 80s, uh, there's three, three things that were, that were influential. I was hanging out with the um, uh, First Will Alliance up there, you know, on 45th Street, you know, Common Avenue. First Will Alliance, that's where, you know, that's where, you know, you know, John Henry Clark, you know, Ivan Van Sertima, you know, those people like that would, would, would lecture there every week to be a different person every week. I was also hanging with, uh, 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 well, I was influenced by uh, Lloyd Strayhorn, which is, uh, he's a numerologist, you know, and also, man, man, Dr. John E. Moore. John, Dr. Moore, he's a herbologist. Right? The, we call him a hobo herbologist. He would be on my program too, No More Radio, later, later on in the, in the, in the 80s, and, and uh, in, in, into the 90s, <laughs> no, into the 80s, late 80s, and uh, he was my resident herbologist. The other, and, and I had, I'll t explain No More Radio some other time, but I would like, here's the way Dr. Moore was, you know, I would have him on a program, you know, I'd say, okay, um, I'd ask him a question. Well, Dr. Moore, um, I've heard about this, you know, what's a good, because of AIDS going around, I said, what's, what's a good uh, herb for, for AIDS? You know, how would you, how would you do that, sir? He said, well, I'll tell you. In Guyana, there's an herb, Paca de Acre. Paca de Acre is, and he would go into this thing. I would leave the studio, because this man would be, he would like talk for Hours, literally hours. <laughs> well, he could. Now I walk. I would, the student would have monitors all over. I go someplace, go to you know, talk to somebody else. Cause I, I, I would, I, I was studying, and I say studying, but I would um, go to Dr. Moore like every week. He'd have these classes up in Huntsville Fifth Street, right off of Fifth Avenue, you know, right across from National Black Theater. Anyway, this old building. So we would go there every, I think it's every, whatever Saturday, whatever, whatever day it was. And, uh, you know, so for two years I did that, I recorded him, you know, he was on the program, da da da. But he is an incredible person. Anyway, so let me get back to what I'm trying to do. You know, I ramble all the time, so just be patient. So, um, the thing about this is that um, when uh, Lloyd Strayhorn, you know, numbers in you guy, people, you, you, you know, you know, our New Yorkers are, are BLS or LIB listeners, we know who, who, um, who I'm talking about, because uh, he had a program, I think, on LIB. Anyway, um, so, he would, um, because uh, what, anyway, when I started traveling at that time, you know, when you when when you when you go someplace, I'm trying to get this fly. When you go when you go to, uh, when you travel, uh, you know, everybody said, "Well, what's your sign?" And you know, you say, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm whatever, whatever, whatever." And that was the all right thing. But I would combine the sign and and numerology because I would do it shorthand, okay, and it would make for a more interesting discussion. Let's put it that way, much more interesting discussion. I'm trying to get this fly again. Excuse me. We're in we're in South Africa. And we have. It's like being in a synagogue. And then, okay. So we would, um, so it would be easier. So you're, you're in an uh, international thing. I'm going to say I'm in Mexico, you know, and being in, in, say I'm at uh, Zipilite, Mexico, the, the, the nude beach there, you know, it's the, and, you know, so you have people, international people all, all around a beach campfire, you know, somebody from, you know, from Sweden, somebody from Spain, somebody from Germany, somebody from Australia, whatever. And so to make things easier, because the whole astrology thing, you know, you have to know the rising time, whatever. But numerology, you just have to know the basics. So, for instance, um, Jesus Malema is a, a Pisces 3. So I would combine these two. I know what Pisces is sort of, you know, they, with the fish, kind of, with, I don't say wishy washy, my rising sign is Pisces, so humanitarian. But, you know, they, they're cool. Maybe not. Um, but the, the main thing is that three, the, the numbers like this, uh, one is like, I think like number one, two is like uh, like coupling, you know, you have to work good with a team. Uh, three is uh, loquacious, good talkers, and also we're like, I'm also a three, I'm a cancer three. Uh, so we're like, um, um, I'll say artistic, but um, loquacious, and we're like 24 people, and it's a whole other thing. Uh, four is odd and unusual, five is extreme. Um, like, like, like my wife is a, 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 a five. She's a um, uh, she's an Aries five, which is like devastating. Eyes five is just they go they're extremists. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Six is uh, education. Seven is spirituality. Eight is prosperity. Nine is complete. Okay. So I was looking at Jews Malema thing. I was oh, oh because he's a talker. And I'm, let me tell you what he changed. He saved South Africa. I'm, I'm, I'll give him that. What he's doing right now, he saved South Africa. What he did, because he, when he came into this political sphere, and he would talk so much and snipe these people so much that the, the, the country, you know, especially ANC, think of the ANC like, I don't know, like, but 
like the Democrats moving over to the right. Let's put it that way. Well, he stopped that. He made everybody, the ANC, the, 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 the DA, they, he made them shift all the way back over to the left. Because he's the one that's, that right now who's, who's advocating uh, to take back the land. Okay? It's, it's like reparations, you know what I mean? Uh, but they, they have a little bit better situation to be able to. And when we say take back, I mean, the chiefs, the chiefs, they, you have land that you have. But then the, the boards, you know, the, 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 the colonialists, they got huge tracts of land. He's saying, no, take that, take that stuff back. Sometimes it's compensation, but so he's advocating that basically. And he's saying that the land is, is what would give you your power, give you your, you have to have land. You know, he said, that's where your powers come from. And he made this speech after a recent speech. He was saying, these old people, they have that prison mentality. They're, they're expected, they're, they're, they're still under that colonial mentality. You know? He said, but, but they treat you like dirt. And, and you are dirt. You're nothing but dirt. That's how they treat you. I mean, he, it was an incredible speech. I've seen a lot of speeches. It's unbelievable. And he's very, very smart. When I say very, very smart, in fact, the whole uh, EFF, they all have been going to school. He's advocating for free school, for you know, church rates, you know, university advocating for, and he says for everybody, it's not just black people, for everybody for the schooling. Sound familiar, almost? Anyway, so he's, so that's, that's what he's about, you know, it, it's, it's incredible, whatever. But let me tell you something that he did very, very simple, simple. When, when he first got out of the, um, uh, they kicked him out of uh, the, whatever, the, the ANC Youth League, African National Congress Youth League, they have the Youth League, they have the Women's League, whatever, just you know, leave him alone. He, um, he was a little chubby, let's put it that way. And he was getting more chubby, so he was looking like the, like all those big fat cats, like B.E. He went on a diet, right, and he looks good. So now he's, and, and all the people around him, they were, like I said, they all went to school, they were all educated, and they just, in fact, when he came into Parliament, they put him in Parliament, right? You know how they, they, they come to Parliament with their suits, you know, the imperial, you know, whatever suits. Very few people wear any traditional clothes. He said, we're with the work, we're with the workers, we're with the, 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 the people, like, like the cleaners, whatever. So they have these jumpsuits that are red. Their color is red. They have these red jumps. They came into Parliament, you could see, look at a clip. They were dressed like workers. I mean, it's, look, it's amazing. It's just amazing. So his his birthday was yesterday. So I was thinking about him, but also I was thinking about Alexandra Castro Cortez. Oh, before I get into Alexandria, let me say something to him. Alexandria, mi corazón. You know, I'm from I'm from the Patterson Mount Haven section of Bronx, the Patterson Project. You you from Parkchester? You know, you, I love your buildings. You know, with the little the statues coming out with the you know dude, look, look like the at least they did the, the workers kind of thing. Wonderful. Most respect, but you know, I, baby, when you did that whole thing, rep reparation, try to slip the Puerto Ricans in there and stuff like that, mm -mm 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 -mm, ain't gonna work. Now, I'm, I'm with you when, 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 when Whoopi, you know, Whoopi comes from a project down in Chelsea area or whatever. Uh, they, nah, pff, those Manhattan people, nah, they don't know anything. In fact, let me, let me speak to something you know, because here's the thing about the Bronx. And I know you all represent Queens too, but leave them alone. Let's think about the Bronx. Bronx is the only borough that's connected to the contiguous United States. In other words, Queens, you know, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Manhattan, you all are really in the Atlantic Ocean. You know, you're not really, okay, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So we in the Bronx, we have a, we're a little bit, we're a little bit different. A lot of us are, are very clever, slick, as you might say, you know. So you, that slick move ain't gonna work. So you better get your staff on it. You better get your staff to have somebody that's really in touch with the, you know, the, the African descendants of, of chattel of, of slavery, you know, ADOS movement, and get the real deal. Don't be, cause it ain't gonna work. Cause we're coming after everybody. Anyway, enough for I was trying to ask it. We just want to break Whoopi Goldberg. First thing he said, before the woman even was in Congress, or sworn in the Congress, whatever they do, she said, oh, she's young. She needs to sit down and learn from the elders. And what did she do? And Whoopi's been out of the view. She's been sick or something like that. I'm waiting for when they, when when, uh, when she comes back, she's going to give a public apology because she she didn't make that a public apology to Alexandria. I'm waiting for that. If she don't do it, I'm going to say, oh, what the, you know, you've been hanging out with them Hollywood types way too long. You've been famous way too long. You're out of touch. All you have to do is just jump on a train, you know, jump on the sixth train and go up to, you know, go up to, go to Parkchester, Parkchester area of the Bronx and, and, and talk to the people or go to a Queens thing. And remember, here's the nice thing about Alexandra Cocktail Cortez. Her district is very small. 
But like in Congress, so what you you have senators that come from little small states and other things. So so what happens? She can stay in power for a very 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 long time, as long as she's doing the bidding of the people. Because it's not spread out. You don't know no Jeremy. You understand? So she's gonna have power. But she's been killing it in Congress. I mean, doing doing the work that he's supposed to be, not grandstanding and, and, and you know, saying, oh, and, I remember when the the, the, the the Bork hearings was happening, the Sim Freakimo hearings. It was, and I was we were watching it. It was very interesting because what happened, every time somebody came up, the uh, senator would say, oh, uh, Mr. Bork, um, uh, um, uh, well, no, uh, I say a, um, a witness form, like some law professor or something would come up. And they said, oh, um, whoever, say Biden was on the, I don't know who was on the committee, but whatever. They would say, oh, Professor so-and-so, nice to see you. I remember when we took, I remember me, I took your class or whatever, I remember. So they all knew each other and stuff, it was a little crony. Then they make these grandiose speeches, how great the person is. But Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she got there and doing the job of what she's supposed to do. Yo, uh, is this the Cohen here? Yo, um, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Ask the questions, get the thing, get the thing, her five minutes, quality. These other people grandstanding now, they, they, they're talking about this and that. And she's been, bills, all the rest of that stuff. In fact, ooh, Alexandria, have you signed on to uh, HR 40? If you haven't signed on to HR 40, do not talk about reparations. Sign on to that bill right now, okay? Right now, okay. All, all your Congress, including my Congress, now. Nah, you know, Bobby, Bobby Scott, you know, you Taiwanese, he's like Taiwanese in America, he's in the Black Caucus, and that, that, I'm going to deal with him when I, when I get up to the States. Anyway, so anyway, she's born uh, uh, the, the 13th of October, right? So her number is four, so she's like odd and unusual. I guess in this situation, it's very odd and unusual. So we have Judas Malema, who's the three, Alexander Costa cortez who's the four, and they're both impacting in their, in their areas what they think. These are young people because uh, Julius Malema, I guess, uh, uh, is he 30, was it uh, 37 now? Whatever it is. You do the math, 81 to now, whatever it is. Uh, Alexandra Castro Cortez, uh, right now she's 29. She's 29. These are young, young, young people. But her, her um, and if I do her numbers, right, like her birth, her birth path, you know, your your, your life, whatever number. Julius is like a seven. That's like spiritual, you know what I mean? So he's like, It'll be St. Julius one of the days, maybe his mirror. But his, his year, this year right now, he's a nine personal year, which means it's a wrap up year. This is also an election year. So he'll, so, so next year, he'll, the cycle starts again with one. So he'll he'll start new things next year, okay? But this year is like a, a, a almost like a, a, a completion of what, he, what, was, what he's been doing, right? Um, uh, Acacio Cortez, her, uh, uh, not only is her birth number of he has up to four, but her her um, her destiny is for also odd and unusual uh, destiny, right? And but her number this year is seven. It's like a spiritual number. So a lot of things she's doing is like I say spiritual, but you know when I say spiritual, it's just mean like no, 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 it's not that. It's like a higher power. She's 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 a higher power. Let's put that's the way I'm, I'm interpreting it. Now here's the the thing. When I look at Alexandria Cortez, and, and when you look at this thing, her potential. I, she might say she'll go to senator next, but she can be president in whatever it is, you know what I mean? Juice Malema, I think his ultimate goal is not, well, he can be president of South Africa if he wants, you know, I, I wouldn't do it. But I think his ultimate goal is he wants to be um, the ch president chairman of the African Union. Think about it. I think he wants to be the cat in the African Union, which, which in other words, he'd be like a, a Gaddafi. Second coming of Gaddafi, where okay, so 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 you get that. So I just wanted to to lay that on you. It's, it's very interesting when I do the, the you do the numbers, um, and I'm very hopeful. I agree with Jish Malema. All us old people, we need to just get out the way. Just get out the way. If, if, an elder, you're supposed to just be a guidance. You're just supposed to give. You know, and say, well, this is my experience. You know. Blah, 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 blah. You know, and, and I would advise is Then the young person is supposed to, with their sensibility, take in that advice and then do what they want with it. You're not supposed to jump in front of a young person. This is their world they're inheriting. Why are you in their way? You, In fact, you had your chance. When you was 29, what were you doing? Think about it. When you was 36, 37, what were you doing? You see? And and, and then I'm very encouraged by all the young people that's doing all this stuff around the world. Now, when I was in uh, um, high school, uh, we, um, I was, 
let me put it this way. The, the 60s, you know, whatever, that was fueled by young people. The, the civil rights movement was like 13 year olds. You know what I mean? There were young people that, that really dealt, dealt with that. I remember in, uh, was this 1967 or early 68 um, in New York? I was going to Theodore Roosevelt High School and, and um, they called for this big day of protest. And we were all supposed to meet at Bronx High School of Science. So all of the schools, we rallied up there. It was amazing. I mean, there must be some pictures of that. It was amazing. So I was a part of, um, I was a co founder of this thing called Afro American Club something like that and we just organized we just walked out of school so it was a young people movement back in the 60s I'm not saying this was happening but this is like worldwide what's happening young people you've got to trust the young people it's right she, those young people that, that, that beat up on Diane Feinstein or Diane Feinstein that tried to beat up on them you know it's their world why are you 75 year old billionaire millionaire whatever you're in their way why are you Whoopi Goldberg millionaire hanging out with you know with your little bubble whatever why are you in some why, why are you in somebody's way you don't know what's happening you really don't you think you do but you've been hanging out with them the, you've been hanging out with the view a little bit too long oh let me jump that one to me i guess i'm talking about my age range right now so I'll, let me leave her alone okay but you'll understand what i'm saying it's a very hopeful time i'm loving it you know and this is just a a, a message for me t from the patterson's taking the train to uh, to tibet um Right here from a, a desk of the ADOS, letting you know what I only suspect.